Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith, Photo J the Great. Just wanted to let you guys know that I've already started uh, making all the tutorial uh, videos, so we're going to kind of go through things uh, fairly slow. Um, however, before I go into all that, I wanted to talk about something that I've noticed uh, a lot of people ask me about on a lot of the review videos. And, um, you know, people ask me, you know, they'll say, hey, which is better, like a, a D5100 or you know, a, a Nikon D7000 or a 60D versus like a like a Rebel T3 or something. Uh, and of course, oftentimes the difference is not in image quality, but it's in the control of the camera. So a lot of times I'll I'll tell people that I'll say, hey, you know, if you want to get uh, more, you know, if you see yourself getting more advanced later on, you're better off getting, you know, that next range of camera that's up from it. You know, like the mid-range camera, uh, like the 60D or the D7000, because of the better controls. So I have, a, I have a feeling that a lot of people um, have kind of had questions about what I mean exactly when I say that next level up in camera has the better, better controls. So that's actually what I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, Nikon D700 and the Nikon D3200. So we're going to be using a pro level DSLR and an entry level DSLR and I'm going to show you uh, that control difference. Um, even though I'm using Nikon, the same, uh, same rule of thumb applies whenever we're looking at Sony DSLRs. So if you were looking at like an A37 versus an A77, um, the same sort of difference would apply in terms of controls. It would apply on Canon also. So if you were looking at like a, a 60D and a Rebel T3i, uh, you'd have a, the, a similar difference in controls there also. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at both of these cameras and I'll show you guys the differences in their controls. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we have the D3200 on the right, and we have the D700 over on the left here. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I meant, meant to mention, I am using the D600 again uh, for this video. The D600 is really, really starting to grow on me. But uh, anyways, there will be an update about that pretty soon. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and start with the D3200. Uh, one of the main things you'll notice about an intro level DSLR is that generally speaking um, you usually have lots of scene modes to choose from. So you can see here I've got full auto mode of course and then you've got your different scene modes, flash, uh, flash off, uh, portrait mode, landscape, child mode, sports, and so forth. And then you have the guide mode which is pretty nice as well. Um, I kind of like that on the Nikon DSLRs. Uh, you have the ability to kind of um, adjust things like you can go into, let's see if we go to shoot here, you can go to easy operation or advanced operation. And if we go to advanced operation, it allows you to have some control over things. So like for example here, <clears throat> notice that it's asking me if I want to soften the background for like a portrait. And of course, you know, for those that uh, you know that that are more advanced shooters you know that in order to do that you would typically shoot at a wider aperture you know or a smaller f number and that would blow the background but for someone just starting out they're not going to know that and so being able to do to do this on simpler terms is very very beneficial so that's pretty cool so you'll notice that you have that um, a lot of people ask me what the difference is between using standard auto versus using a scene mode um, basically, a scene mode still adjusts all the uh, settings automatically, but by picking a scene mode, you're actually telling the camera what type of photograph you want to take. And so the camera is going to basically pick a certain, um, it's basically going to pick a certain type of setting. Uh, it's going to bias itself towards a certain type of setting to, that's, to, that, that's basically more pleasing for a certain type of photograph. So. <clears throat> so you're basically just taking the auto settings a little bit further by telling the camera what you want to take a picture of. So that's something else you'll have on, on this type of camera. Um, <clears throat> of course you do have the ability to shoot in manual because a lot of times whenever I tell people that on say you know the next level of camera up whenever I say that you have better controls on that one a lot of people will say well don't you have full manual on like an intro DSLR? Uh, and the answer is, yes, you do. Um, but the thing is, it's much harder to make those manual adjustments on an intro-level DSLR as it is on a higher-end one. So, 
I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> We've got this camera in full manual now. Um, on the D3200 and pretty much every other DSLR, uh, entry level DSLR, you typically just have one command dial, which on Nikon is on the rear of the camera. So if we're in manual mode, we rotate this rear dial and we're affecting our shutter speed adjustment there. And you can see the shutter speed changing there on the left. In order to change f-stop on this camera, um, you have to actually press the exposure compensation button. I'm going to get a little closer to that. You have to press the exposure compensation button, which you notice it has a little aperture uh, symbol beside it. So basically this button does double duty. Uh, in all the other modes it does, it serves as an app, as a uh, exposure comp button. In manual mode, it serves as an aperture adjustment. So what you have to do is, you have to press and hold it with your index finger and rotate the rear dial simultaneously. And that is what allows you to adjust your f-stop, just like that. So <clears throat> that's a little bit of a contrast compared to um, the higher end models, which are going to have two command dials, which I'll show you that in a second. The other difference is on an intro level DSLR, oftentimes you don't have as many dedicated buttons for different setting, uh, settings. <clears throat> now, on this 3200, it does have a customizable function button, which is right here. And um, you can customize it, um, but the most useful um, the most useful ability for this one is the ISO. That's probably the most useful setting. So what you do is you press the uh, press that button and rotate the rear dial, and you can change the ISO. Now on higher end DSLRs, you have many many more things that you can adjust in this in a similar manner, um, like your white balance and image quality and so forth. But on a camera like the 3200, <clears throat> it's more menu driven. So in order to change something like, uh, like say for example, white balance, one would have to press this little button down here, and then you're presented with a list. And so you can actually scroll through all these. So if we wanted to change a white balance, we would go to white balance, hit OK, and then we actually would have to scroll down and select it like that. And the same thing is gonna go for things like um, our focus modes, um, focus drive, uh, or excuse me, our uh, drive modes. So we could go to continuous shooting and self timer and all that. We can go down here and change our focus modes between uh, auto servo or continuous servo or single. And then we've got our AF area modes down here and we have our metering modes. So that's pretty much how you change all that on this camera. So basically you just have to go into menus a little bit more. Now, <clears throat> if you're just starting out, using this camera is going to be the much better way to go because it's going to give you the ability to use the full auto setting and it's going to give you the ability to uh, use scene modes also. If we compare and contrast that <clears throat> with something like uh, the Nikon D700 and by the way I will also point out the fact that the mid-range cameras like a D7000 or like uh, the D600 their controls are going to be kind of somewhere between both of the cameras we're comparing today. Um, but I wanted to compare an intro level ver camera versus a pro level camera just to show you the maximum amount of difference between camera controls. Alright, so looking at the D700, um, the first thing that you'll notice is, okay, go, I'll grab this one real fast. On the uh, 3200, remember you just had a single, well, I'm having to do this one-handed, there we go. You'll notice that you have a single uh, rear command dial, and of course there's no dial at all on the front. On the D700, you have your front command dial, and you have a rear command dial. By the way, you guys have to under, it kind of excuse this camera. It, I mean, it is, it is mine, it's heavily used. <laughs> so, it's not, she's not pretty, but she shoots well. Um, Anyways, okay, I'm going to bring up the info display here. So one of the main things you'll notice, um, of course, this camera doesn't actually have a command dial anymore. Uh, at least on your higher-end Nikons, you basically change modes by holding the mode button, rotating the rear dial, and basically this camera just has four modes. So on your 3200, 
how it has the more manual settings blocked, you know, kind of uh, blocked off right there. It's got them kind of uh, highlighted, if you will. Um, you know, the manual, the aperture, priority, shutter priority, and program. On the D700 or any other pro level Nikon, um, you basically have just those four modes. And to go through them, you hit the mode button. You can see right now that I am in manual mode. Hit the mode button, rotate the rear dial. We go from manual to program to shutter priority, aperture, aperture priority, and back to manual again. So that's the four modes you have on this camera, and that's the only four you have. Um, it is interesting to note that on the pro level Canons, uh, while they don't have the scene mode settings, they still have a full auto, which I always found kind of odd. And it's basically a similar story on Sony as well. But on any of the higher level uh, cameras, you do lose the scene modes. So, um, but apparently Canon sees some reason to put auto on the pro level cameras. I could never understand that. But anyways, moving on to the controls on this. If I can get my chair adjusted, there we go. Moving on to the uh, <clears throat> controls on this, you'll notice that you have a lot of dedicated buttons for a lot of things. So over on this side of the camera, um, Nikon has these button, this little button layout. You've got your ISO, your image quality, and then your white balance right there. So as I mentioned before, this is all pretty much controlled by um, pressing a button and rotating a dial. All this stuff shows up in the viewfinder as well. So basically the name of the game here is speed. They know that advanced users are going to um, be less likely to allow the camera to do all the work. They're going to be changing settings a lot. Um, as I always tell everybody, you know, if the bride is coming down the aisle and you need to change the white balance or you need to change the ISO, I mean, you don't want to have to stop, take the camera down from your face and go button and go scroll and go enter and go scroll and go enter because you're going to start missing shots. So that's why on a camera like this, on any pro level camera, it's basically allowed to allow you to change things very quickly. So of course I'm going to use the info display. You've got your rear display and your top one as well. Um, so yeah, basically to change that, hit the white balance button and rotate the rear dial just like that. And you can also change everything, or you can also see a lot of things in your viewfinder. And because of the way these buttons are laid out, it's possible to memorize their location. So you've got the button here on the right, you kind of remember, okay, that's ISO, this is quality, this is white balance. So the name of the game here is speed. Um, if we change ISO, it's the same way. Hit the ISO button, rotate the rear dial, and we can change it. Uh, generally speaking, too, on higher end cameras, you'll notice that on ISO adjustment, it's typically going to be in third stops. On a camera like this 3200, notice that it is actually in full stops. So if we change our ISO, it goes from 100 to 200 to 400, 800, 1600, so on. Whereas on any of your higher end models, it's usually going to be in third stop adjustment. So here, you know, we can go 200, 250, 320, so on. So it gives you a little bit more fine tune adjustment on that. Um, in terms of focusing, we have a dedicated uh, physical button for this. On the, on the newer Pro Nikons, it's a little bit different, but we'll get to that later on whenever we look at like the D800. So we've got uh, area modes here, single point focus, dynamic focus, auto area, and then on your focus drive, you have a switch over here on the side, C for continuous, S for single, and M for manual like that. On the newer, on the newer Nikons like the 7000, the 600, and 800, and D4, <clears throat> it's actually even easier to make that adjustment. And uh, then we have the metering, which is right here, and it falls under my thumb. So it's possible to change the metering modes much, much faster also. So that's pretty much the difference there. <clears throat> so whenever I'm talking about uh, better controls on pro level cameras, that is what I'm referring to. So now you guys know. And as I said earlier, it's pretty much the same sort of story on Canon and Sony also. Obviously they have their, their own little nuances, just like 
they do with uh, everything else between manufacturers. But generally speaking, higher end camera equals better control. So if you know that you're going to uh, use manual and um, you know, you're not really going to need the auto settings, while you may not be improving your image quality going to a higher camera, you know, the controls make a very, very big difference. If anyone has any further questions about this, write me in the comments below. Don't, uh, don't forget to share the video if you like it. Uh, click like if you like it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, Photog Day the Great, signing off.